Well, blessings and glory and honor to the Lord God that created the heavens and the earth. I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I just say this here, glory to God, this whole series on love, what love is. Literally, we call it love is. When we talk about love, we're talking about the agape love of God. We're talking about supernatural love. Now, there's four types of love that we understand in the scriptures. There is agape, which is the highest kind of love. It is the supernatural manifestation of the love of God. Then there's phileo. Phileo love is that, that camaraderie love, that, that love kind of like that you have with your friends and, 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 and co-workers that you develop relationship with. Then there's storge. That's that family love, that family love that goes extend. We talk about blood is thicker than water kind of love. And then you have eros. That's erotic love. But tonight, we're going to focus on agape love, the agape love of God. Now, I got to say this here. When we master agape, it causes those other forms of love to now operate at an amplified level because we have now the power, the passion. We have the supernatural touch of God because agape love now becomes our foundation. And when agape love is the foundation of everything that you do, everything that you say, and then Agape love becomes the gauge to literally help us to think properly, help us to make decisions properly, help us to now be able to have a format and a formula for dealing with Satan and dealing with the crazy impact of this world and then dealing with people who are either under the influence of God or under the influence of Satan. And we have to be able to answer people. We got to be able to now explain to people what agape is, explain to people what is going on behind the scenes in the spirit realm that's causing people to act the way they act, talk the way they talk. And our goal as Christians is to encourage people and explain to people how agape love works, how God is working. And let me just say this here. You don't have to be perfect in the knowledge of what agape is, but you have to be submitted to say, God, I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to change and I'm willing to express agape love with an explanation. Now, the only way that we can see and understand agape in human form, in human manifestation or in human operation, we have to look at Jesus Christ because Jesus was the perfect manifestation of agape love. Oh my God. And when we look at Jesus in all of the circumstances and the situations that he dealt with, and then we say to the Holy Spirit, help us to operate the way Jesus operated. Help us to operate that agape love the way Jesus did in our life right now. The Holy Spirit will do it. The Holy Spirit will open your understanding. The Father God will open your understanding. The Lord Jesus will open your understanding. And next thing you know, now when you're starting to respond in situations, you're explaining to people why you're, you're operating at a higher level of, of, of treating them, responding to them, and then helping them overcome the slickery. All right, that's my new word for tonight. The slickery of that devil. Now, I'm telling you right now, as we now master love, as we now embrace the love of God, what a powerful way to express life. What a powerful way to handle and deal with the blessings as well as the challenges of life. So we're going to jump right on in. We looked at agape from a standpoint of, okay, what agape is, who agape is. We looked at what agape love does, what agape love does when it's weaponized. Now, when I say weaponized, the very minute you confront satanic behavior, the minute you confront a satanic attack with the agape love of God, when you respond with agape love and are able to explain why you're responding the way you're responding and then connect people's thinking to the fact that they're dealing with the love of God. They're looking at you like, what in the world has gotten a hold of you? And you say, look, I am living out and acting out agape love. And then you got to explain to them, agape love is God. So the the, the dealing and the treatment that I'm, I'm putting on you now through my actions or through my speech 
is the power of the agape love of God manifested to you. This is how we got to start explaining things to people. Because as I said before, when people see you operating this agape love, you know what I mean? They, they might think that you don't went soft. They might think that you, you know what I mean? You don't turn into a sucker and you got to be like, no, I'm just operating in a higher level of love. In other words, instead of responding to you satanically, I'm going to respond to you with godly agape. And so godly agape is powerful. That's why when we talk about weaponizing it, the minute you put love on hate, hate falls apart. The minute you put love on doubt, doubt falls apart because you now have a reason. You now have a purpose and you now are representing almighty God. And now when you start praying and saying to God, God, I need your help here. God, I love you. I adore you. God, I just repent and I thank you for reviving my life and, and being sovereign in my life. When you start praying like that, by the time you speak to that devil and rebuke him and resist him and break his power over every area that you can see him trying to steal, kill, and destroy in your life, because agape love is built up, your faith is built up, now you're starting to praise God and you're worshiping God. Then you turn around and you start thanking God for all the good that's already taken place in your life. This is agape. This is your response to agape. And now the next thing you know, you sitting there and you done started your day like that. You done charged up the middle of your day in three to five minutes. You talking to God, praying to God, giving God praise, rebuking Satan, calling on the power of God, walking in this divine love, this divine power, weaponized. You become uncontrollable in the hands of Satan. Satan don't know what to do with you. So, so when you're facing that enemy and he's coming at you all kind of ways, you gotta, I have to get back into the presence of God through prayer and praise and then get a word from God, just put a word in my spirit. And, and then when I start understanding agape, and this is what we're getting into tonight, understanding agape love, understanding the power of that love, but you gotta have faith in God's way of doing things. Now, I'll tell you right now, we're going to need some help with that one. I need help with that. And you're going to probably say the same thing. I need help with that. So let's look at love really, really, really quick. And we're going to look at love. I'm going to go through 17 things real quick. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start breaking down some of these words in 1 Corinthians 13 from the original language. And I'll just say this here as a backdrop. You know, uh, uh, God comes in there and gives Paul, the apostle, this revelation in 1 Corinthians 13. And so by the time we start in verse one, Paul is now making a contrast. And he's saying, look, you can be spiritually sharp and oracly sound. You can be a person that is benevolent and loving to humanity. And you can, you can even sacrifice your own life for the good of humanity. But if you don't have agape love as your foundation, as your reasoning for doing what you're doing, for your purpose, for manifesting the actions that you treat people with, it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't count for anything, especially eternally. And it doesn't count in the eyes of God. It counts in the eyes of man. You know, when you're doing good and benevolent things, you're doing human, uh, humanistic things, you're doing humanitarian things. You know, that's what that's wonderful for humanity. But God says, if I, if you're going to have me to give you credit, and if you're going to, and if you're going to have that to bring reward to your life for the rest of eternity, you've got to do it out of agape love. It's got to come out of the holster of agape love. And that means it's got to be done for the glory of God. And then Paul the Apostle, he goes on to say, look, he says, you know, you're doing great things for humanity. You're doing spiritual things in the kingdom of God. That's wonderful. He's saying, listen, even if, even if you sacrifice for family and the good of others, he says, if you don't have love, it doesn't profit you at all. You have, you have, all you doing is making noise and doing stuff. So we now take that as God saying, I want to get you connected so that you get benefit for everything that you're doing and that you're doing everything in life, moving through, moving by and moving with the power of God, the power of God's love. That's powerful. And again, the only person that you can look at in the earthly realm that's ever lived in this earth is Jesus Christ. That means Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You got to literally go into those books and you got to now do your best. And you're going to need the Holy Spirit's help with this here. You're going to need the Father God to give you revelation. You're going to have to say to God, God, help me 
to see how Jesus did it. Help me to imagine how Jesus responded and acted based on the revealed knowledge of the word of God given to us through the apostles, the, the disciples of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now here we go. 17 things. I'm going to read. I'm not going to expound. You're going to have to go to the very first lesson where we broke some of this down. Number one, without the agape love, God says you're bankrupt. You can have a lot of money. You can have a lot of friends. You can have a lot of influence with your friends. You can have a little bit of money. You can have a little bit of influence. But God says the minute you connect with agape love, all of that's going to change. Because now we're explaining to people how the miraculous touch of God has come in and changed us in such a manner that everything that we put our hands to begins to prosper because the anointing and the touch of God is on it. So watch what he says. He says, I am bankrupt without love. All of us are. We're bankrupt without love. We can do a lot of earthly things, but without agape love as our foundation, none of those earthly things will give us credit in the eyes of God. We'll get credit in the eyes of man. The eyes of man will be happy about it. But God says, I can't get glory out of it because you don't have the, the baptism in the love of God. The love of God doesn't even come into your life, into your heart, into your innermost being until you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. The minute you pledge your allegiance to Jesus Christ, a new spirit is put on the inside of you. The old nature and spirit is taken out. This is, this is instantaneous. That's what we call born again or born from up above. We, we call it in the Pentecostal church, you got saved. And, and you say, wait, what do you mean I got saved? You put your trust in Jesus Christ. You made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. You believed in your heart that God the Father, God the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. And G Jesus Christ is no longer dead, but resurrected. You put your faith in those two things. The Bible says automatically you shall be saved. And that literally is the start of agape now coming out of you. As the Bible says in Romans, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. So when you gave your life to Christ, when you pledged your allegiance to Jesus Christ, God put their nature on the inside of you, took the old nature of wickedness and evil out of you, the, the nature that we got from Satan, and we've been born again. Oh, that is so awesome. And it's the love. It is the agape love of God that now propels us through life overcoming Satan, handling challenges, and literally bringing joy and peace and comfort and hope to everyone that we come in contact with and we share the power of agape. So here goes, because you're not bankrupt no more. I'm not bankrupt when it comes to love. Oh, we got an account with God and we're building. Oh, hallelujah. Getting better at it. Yes, you are. Oh, sweet Jesus. You are getting better at life because you're getting better at understanding, walking in, and explaining agape love. So here we go. Number one, love never gives up. That's powerful. Number two, love cares more for others than for self. Woo! Good God Almighty. Number three, love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. Number four, love doesn't strut. Mm. Number five, love doesn't have a swelled head. Ooh. I said, I'm not going to expound. I am not going to expound. But he said, number six, love doesn't force itself on others. Mm, 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 mm. Number seven, love isn't always me first. Oh, gosh. You know, they talk about a selfish me first, okay? Number eight, love doesn't fly off the handle. Oh, sweet Jesus. Wow. Number nine, love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. I don't know about right now, it's like, whoo, agape love is powerful. And about this time, you know, it's okay if you say, Lord, increase my faith. You know what I mean? So look at this here. Number 10, love doesn't revel when others grovel. All right, we're going to break all of this down because when we, by the time we get to the King James Version, and we start breaking all of these words down from the original language, it is going to be clear as day. And it is going to, it's going to literally ignite in you a whole new pattern and level of loving 
and explaining and, and manifesting Almighty God to your family, to your friends, and especially to your enemies. Look at this here. Number 11, love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Mm. And then number 12, love puts up with anything. Oh, sweet Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now, about this part, I'm starting to say, Lord, increase my faith, right? Okay, number 13, love trusts God always. Woo. You know, sometimes we face some stuff, and, and the devil be trying to shake our faith and try to get us to not trust God. But agape is empowered and infused with the ingredients and with the capabilities of putting us in a position that we always trust God. All right, look at this here. Number 14, love always looks for the best. Woo, I love it. All right, look at this here. Number 15, lover, lover, love never looks back. Love's always, oh, okay, I said I wasn't going to expound. Love never looks back. Don't, they don't dwell in the past. It's always looking forward and expecting better. Look at this here. Number 16, love keeps going to the end. Oh, sweet Jesus, love is a finisher. And then number 17, love never fails or dies. Isn't that great? That's some powerful stuff because that's what we're made out of. That's what's flowing in our heart. That's what God is developing us in. And again, we look at Jesus Christ and we see love in action. We see the manifestation of agape when we look at Jesus. So now Jesus not only becomes our, blu our blueprint, Jesus now becomes that which we can now fall back on like the techniques of God. Jesus like, Perfect technique and manifestation. Jesus is like, if you want to know how to, you look at Jesus and, and you look at Jesus and be like, okay, Lord, help me to deal with stuff the way you dealt with stuff. And when we do that, oh my God. The results, okay? So the results is what is what we're looking at. We're looking at getting the same results that Jesus got. You got to have faith in that. I got to have faith in that. Hey, just because I'm a preacher don't mean I got this stuff mastered. I'm a preacher, yeah, but I'm still in school mastering just like you're in school mastering. I'm just bringing it to you. And for me, I got to bring it to you as clear as God has revealed it in the scriptures. That means going to the Greek, going to the Hebrew, breaking these words down, telling you what it means, what these words mean, and, and also, I'm talking to myself. I'm like, okay, because this is this is for me too. So we're all working together. But we're working together, getting stronger as we grow in the manifestation and the execution of walking in agape love. Okay, so now I is here. Love is. Now, all right, I'm going to tell you this right here, straight out the gate. All right? When you have childish ways, childish thinking, selfish, you know what I mean? You know, immature, this is going to be tough because, you know, the Apostle Paul said, look, when I was a child, I thought like a child. But but now I, I'm coming to maturity. I'm, I, I, I'm thinking like an adult right now. And so if I'm going to walk in love, if I'm going to now embrace agape, I have to put away some childish things and I have to now begin to operate like an adult. I got to op operate like I'm seasoned, like I've learned some things, like I've been through some stuff, and, and, and I got to now appreciate getting this knowledge and understanding the power of agape. So uh, moving forward, we're not thinking like children. No, we, we, we about to handle some business for God. We about to handle some business for ourselves. We about to handle some business for our family. We about to handle some kingdom business operating these keys of love, operating this agape love. And then when we begin to now build up in this agape love and we start now releasing this love through our speech, releasing this love through our prayers, releasing this love through our actions in our situations and circumstances and God's supernatural power begins to start changing things and turning things around, changing people, causing them to have a different appreciation and respect for us because we're now 
we've looked at Jesus's life. We're starting to imitate how Jesus operated. We're imagining how Jesus operated in the varying circumstances and situations that he had to deal with. But he dealt with those things with agape love and Jesus never lost. Jesus never, ever was defeated. He was never, ever overcome, overpowered by Satan, his wickedness and his evil campaign. And we can look for and expect the same outcomes that Jesus had because, ooh, Jesus, all because Jesus Christ showed us how. Now, that's some powerful stuff. So now, watch this here. We're going to move on. We left off last time we were together, and we went to the King James Version, and we saw how the fact that in the very first now manifestation of what agape is, we saw, hallelujah, that um, agape love, okay, suffers long. And I'm telling you right now, oh, my gosh, let me get there real quick because now when we say uh, agape love suffers long, in other words, God's love is patient. And and because God's love is, is patient, now, watch this here, God can be patient toward us. God can now respond to us with long suffering god can now respond to us with the ability to to operate not only towards us with agape which is the nature of the father the nature of the holy spirit the nature of the holy spirit working in us now when god now begins to operate with us utilizing and manifesting long suffering God turns around and says, okay, I'm going to do it to you, and I've been doing it to you, but now I need you. Woo! I need you to begin to manifest that to yourself, and then I need you to manifest that to your family. I need you to manifest that to your friends. I need you to manifest that to your enemies. All right, that's a good place where you can say, Lord, increase my faith. So now we go on, and so let's break some of this down. We went to long suffering the last time we was here, and so I want to just look at this here. Verse 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. The Apostle Paul, he's now giving us the heads up on how to walk in victorious life in every situation, every circumstance, no matter what Satan throws against us. And then when God gives us an assignment that we can conquer it, we can Deal with it, no matter what it is. But now, we got to stay connected with our faith, trusting God. So look at this here. Charity suffereth long, or agape suffereth long and is kind. We're going to stop there. We're going to deal with this suffering long. And then we're going to deal with, you know what I mean, how to make that relevant, dealing with some of the folks we got to deal with. Okay, so watch this here. This word, suffereth long. It is the Greek word, Mac Ruth Omiho, Mac Ruth Omiho. Now, don't worry about the pronunciation of that Greek word. Here's what it means. Now, we got eight things we got to deal with real quick. Number one, to be long spirited. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, when you're dealing with agitating things, when you're dealing with frustrating things, when you're dealing with delays, even you got to fill those delays with praise. When you're dealing with circumstances, people, you know what I mean? That's really trying to get you to explode. You got to be long spirited. This is where agape comes in and supernaturally gives you the ability to, you know what I mean, to, to kind of be patient and to, to endure and, and to be able to be like, OK, I'm not going to just, you know, respond and just come at you. You know what I mean? The way in some cases you deserve to be come at in some cases where, you know what I mean, people need they need some mercy. So we got to now master this long suffering thing and agape. When we allow it to flow, guess what? We become long spirited. So now, you know, you know, I like to say to folks that 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 short spirited, you got a short fuse. And you know, when people got a short fuse in life, you know, they 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 get angry, they get they get belligerent, you know what I mean? They 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 get, you know, they get crazy and they get wild and out of control and, and, and undisciplined. And the next thing you know, their behavior becomes sometimes unmanageable. That's why we need agape. So like I said, number two, forbearing, right? You know what? People acting up, but you got to explain to folks. You know, you're acting up right now. 
and 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 you really really you know what i mean you're really making me have to operate this long suffering because right now if i gave you what you've given me okay uh this thing it wouldn't end right you know but i'm gonna be forbearing with you and you got to break it down and show them that i'm being long suffering right now i'm doing to you what god has done to me and what god has been doing to you god's been real long suffering with you god hasn't put judgment on you you know what I mean? So we're working on this agape. All of this is agape being manifested to you. This is how you got to start talking to people. You got to start explaining this. If you don't explain this, people are going to look at you and I'm telling you, they're going to try to play you, right? Number three, patiently endure. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, when you start dealing with circumstances, and situation that really, like I said, it gets you on edge. Sometimes you got to explain to some people, okay, look, all right, I'm on edge right now. You don't hit me four times. And I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm almost ready to redline on you. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to explode. I'm doing my best to walk in this agape. I'm doing my best to walk in this long suffering. But you, you okay, you're going to make me act a fool up in here. And I don't want to do that. I, I You know, this is, this is long suffering. See, when you start explaining to people what they're doing, and you start explaining to people why you haven't gone off on them, or why you haven't cut them off, or why you haven't, you know what I mean, talk back slick to them, guess what? Now they got an understanding. And because of that understanding, now they're sitting there saying, wow, or they should be saying, wow, you know, they could have really let me have it. And you choose not to go at them like that, but you choose to explain to them, this is how agape love operates. And I'm not no fool. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not to be played and trifled with, but I'm doing my best to show you Number one, the love of God. So now, guess what you and I become? We become now conduits. We become now representation of the agape love. You know, and sometimes you got to explain to people, look, I'm not Jesus, okay? I'm, I got a handle on things now, but but don't push me. You, I only got a couple more, a couple more pushes. You 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 push the buttons a couple more times. You and you might get me carnal, and you might cause me to go satanic on you fleshly and so you sometimes you got to explain to people and hopefully they'll believe you and they, they'll calm down all right look at this here look at this here long suffering or suffereth long number four means not to lose heart you know it's so easy to give up on love especially when you're dealing with some hard people you know you're dealing with some rebellious folks and then you're dealing with some folks that are just they're deliberately deceitful and and then when they when they add a little bit of narcissism in there and they think that they slick and they think that they can get over on you, this one here you can't give up on agape love. You got you got to put it on them some more. You got to put that explanation on them again, and you know what I mean. And hopefully, they'll listen. Hopefully, they'll hear the Holy Spirit saying, "You're better than this." And I'm telling you, if we do more explaining to folks, they'll get it, and they, they may not obey it. But they'll get it. And then the Holy Spirit can deal with them and talk to them and let them know, you need Jesus. You need a change in life because the direction you're going in is further away from the plan and purpose that I have for you. This is how the Holy Spirit be talking to folks too. Oh, oh yeah, he'd be talking to them on their level. All right, look at this here. Number five, now we're talking about long suffering or suffereth long, okay? This is agape. This is just one aspect of agape love. Look at this here. Number five, definition number five, to persevere patiently and bravely in enduring misfortunes and troubles. Now, you know what? Let me just say this here. Misfortunes and troubles are coming your way. They're coming my way. They've come my way. They've come your way. Misfortunes and troubles is Satan attacking you. And he'll try that any way he can. Let me explain something to you. Satan brought misfortunes and troubles to Jesus's doorstep every day of his life. But guess what? Every time Satan brought trouble and misfortune to Jesus, the Father God, when Jesus was a baby, always interfered and interrupted and disrupted Satan's plan. When Jesus was just an infant, Satan through Herod tried to kill Jesus. You read the story in Matthew, you read the story in Luke. Satan had Herod kill every baby 
two years old and younger in Jesus's hometown. And Satan was trying to destroy Jesus with misfortune and, and trouble. But God came in there with an angel. He sent Gabriel down there and woke Joseph up. Wake up. I got to talk to you. Get Joseph, J Joseph, <laughs> get Jesus and Mary. Get up out of here tonight and go to Egypt right now. And Joseph was like, okay. And, and then I could imagine Gabriel said, all that gold you got, all that frankincense I, I got to you and told you about that God sent, all of that. I, I talked to them wise men and I'm talking to you right now because I'm the messenger angel from heaven. God sent me and Joseph obeyed. Here was Satan trying to bring trouble and misfortune to Jesus when he was just a little baby. You know, and, and, and all through Jesus's adult life, Satan was just attacking with situations to create misfortune and trouble. But Jesus overcame them all. I got good news for you. As Jesus was agape love manifested in the flesh, and you're learning about agape love, the same outcomes that Jesus Christ had, you're going to have. And you're going to see them begin to be more and more prevalent, more and more your lifestyle because you're trusting in agape love. You're now saying to God, I thank you right now for giving me the patience, the praise, the joy, the ability to persevere and not give up, giving me the bravery to stand against and resist every attack of misfortune, every attack of trouble that Satan sends to me. Oh, sweet Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, when you put cheerful endurance, when you start praising God and saying, God, I thank you, this thing is not going to overtake me. This thing is not going to overtake me. This thing is not going to overcome me. All of Satan's attacks and his desires to, to conquer me with misfortune and conquer me with trouble, I thank you, Lord, that through agape and through your power, that it will never happen. And that's the faith that we release to God. That's the speech that we speak to and rebuke Satan with. No, you can bring trouble to me, but it's not going to be successful in my life in Jesus' name. That's how you talk to Satan. That's how you talk to misfortune and trouble. And if misfortune and trouble kicks your dough in, you make sure you stand there with some agape and you got some scriptures and you got some rebuke in you. You got to be brave. You got to be courageous. You got to be full of faith. And you are. I am. So when that devil come at me, I start to rebuking. I start to praising. I start to releasing agape love through the knowledge. I start explaining to Satan, you don't understand who you're dealing with, dude. You are dealing with a child of God that's been studying the life of Jesus. That's how you got to talk to that devil when he come in. Man, you don't dare come in there and play me like I'm brand, brand new at this. And even if I was brand, brand new, I know this much. I know that you and your misfortunes and your troubles cannot prevail against me. Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my children. So if Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail, you just got to say, hell no, Satan. You are not dominating my life. Oh, this is good. This is so good. Look at this here. Number six. To be patient in bearing the offenses and injuries of others. Now, I'm going to tell you, right, this is some powerful stuff. When you can take the offenses and the injuries that others bring against you, and you can now overpower those things with love, overpower those things with the knowledge of God, overpower those things the way Jesus overpowered the offenses and, 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 and the, the injuries that the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees tried to bring into his life. They tried to come at Jesus with all of this here craziness and all of this here. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to bring misfortunes and they wanted to bring troubles, but Jesus overcame them all. You know, there was a time when Jesus, you know what I mean? He was, he put that word on him so good. And, 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 you know, and they walked him up to a cliff and was going to throw him off. And the Bible says that the power of God manifested in such a way that Jesus just walked right through the midst of them. 
These folks was hot. Satan got these people all riled up and charged up. Jesus had just put the word on them, just did some miracles in front of them. They didn't like it. They was ready to throw him off a cliff. And Jesus, they got him, they got him close enough to that cliff to where Jesus had to activate that power. And I'm telling you right now, when you trust in the agape love of God, you may be in situations that are full of misfortune, full of trouble. Satan done set this thing against you and set people against you. But if you'll trust in agape and begin to say, God, I thank you. You said misfortune would not conquer me. You said misfortune and troubles would not overpower me. And I'm trusting you now. I'm trusting your agape. And then you bravely look at folks and look at situation and rebuke Satan. And now not rebuke Satan and do something foolish. Rebuke Satan and then do everything that you know to do that you've been told to do to overcome in that situation. And God will step in and develop a, a shield around about you. He'll develop a force field around about you. It's because you love God. You understand how Jesus operated. I'm telling you, we got to look at Jesus, look at it. Every situation that Jesus had to deal with in confronting Satan, confronting Satan's wild kids and confronting circumstances in life, misfortunes and troubles that came to overpower him and dominate him. And they couldn't, it couldn't, and it's not gonna happen in your life either because your faith is getting too strong in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Too strong in God. All right, look at this here. Okay, number seven, to be mild and slow in avenging. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, that we human, and people do us wrong. We want, we want to get revenge. God says agape doesn't go out and seek and try to get revenge. I'm going to tell you right now, okay, whoo, I'm like, Jesus, I need, I, need, I, I need your touch stronger on this one here. I need to be brave enough to trust you, oh God. This is me talking to God now. God, I need to be brave enough to trust in your agape, to trust in the way you want to do things. Because me, I'm ready to meet people in the alley. I'm ready to meet them when they're coming home and take a two by four to them. But that, that don't glorify God. And that might get you caught thrown in jail. That might even get you killed. So God says, you don't do the vengeance thing. God says, when agape has grown in you, then, then you may think about doing it, but you're not going to do it because you know you have that self-control and that self-discipline and you love God and you're going to obey God. But now, now you know on another day when everything is calm and mild, you know what I mean? You need to explain to some folks, you know, I'm going to tell you what, the devil wanted, to, wanted me to take a baseball bat to you. I, I said, no, I resisted the devil. See that explanation? You know, I'm, I'm not threatening you or anything like that, but I'm talking right now, the devil wanted me to get a Louisville slugger and pop you a couple of times for what you did. Because I could have took revenge on that. I chose not to, not because I didn't want to do it, but because I wanted to please God more. And that, this is a good time for you to say, but don't push me. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know y'all going to say, I, we didn't come to hear that. I, right, I get it. Pray for me, okay? Pray for me. Because I'm telling you, I need, I need help with walking out this agape. It's easy to understand it. It's easy to preach it. But now you got to obey it. I got to put it into practice. And I am. I am. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I think I'm growing. You got to put it into practice. Do you think you're growing in agape? Because the minute you start hearing it and you start understanding it, it's like, okay, I'm going to tell you what agape has done for me. Studying this series, this series has brought me closer to God because now I see how much I need God, I need God more. I need more to touch of God now to, to keep me trusting in agape. Oh, sweet Jesus. Last one, number eight. This is this is about suffering long. Slow to anger. Right, wait a minute. Now, let me just say this here about anger. The Bible does say, be angry. Just don't let your anger cause you to sin. You know, because stuff people do, stuff that Satan be putting in your mind, make you angry. God says, don't sin. When Satan puts a thought in your mind, you recognize that that is a satanic attack from, from that devil himself. Putting thoughts in your mind, you got to rebuke him. Get angry and, and then rebuke him. All right, cast them thoughts down. Now, watch this here. He says, love suffereth long and is kind. Ooh, sweet Jesus. All right, we're going to deal with this word kind. Then we're going to wrap it up for the night. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you, you, you're you going to have to explain this to people. You're going to have to explain why you're being so kind. You're going to have to explain to people why you're being so long-suffering, why you're 
while you're suffering long, why you're, you know what I mean? Why you're being so long spirited with them, so patient with them. You, you got to explain it to them. And, and then, and then again, now, all right, I know I'm, this is not going to win me a popularity contest. This, this may not get me, you know what I mean? No invites to preach in churches. That's why I got street corners. You know what I mean? But, but, okay. Sometimes you got to let people know that you ain't Jesus. That, that, you choose to obey God and you can choose not to obey God. And hopefully that'll cause them to see that they are dealing with somebody that's real. And then they, they might hopefully say, I'm not going to push their buttons. And the Holy spirit will tell them don't push their buttons. And, and people need to know that you're not Jesus Christ, but you are a child of God. You're a child. You're a disciple of Jesus Christ, that you're an apprentice of Jesus Christ. You're a protege of Jesus Christ. That that you are a pupil of Jesus Christ. But you ain't graduated yet. You still in school learning. People need to know you not Jesus that you you and then sometimes you got to get clear enough and say, "Look, I'm only in kindergarten with this stuff." Or, you know, I, I'm only in elementary school with this here. Or you can say, I, "I'm in high school, but I can still go satanic on you." And hopefully intelligent people will be like, all right, you know what? They real. So it's kind of like, yo, help me. Help me to walk in agape. I'm going to help you to walk in agape. How am I going to do that? I'm not going to do things to push your buttons. So help me by not doing things to push my buttons. All right, enough of that. All right, let's kind. The Greek word, you ready for this? Cross your omahi. Cross your omahi. It's the Greek word for kind. This is what it means. And I'm going to wrap up here. I'm not going to expound on this here. I'm just going to break this down. You're going to get this one. This one here? Oh, I, I was praying for this one. I was like, God, I, I need I need your touch. I need I need your strength. Because you know, we we you know we are kind, but are we supernaturally kind? Are we kind manifesting the agape kind of kindness? The God kind of kindness. So let's break this down. Look at this here. This word kind. I'm telling you right now, this when I when I was breaking this down, I was like, okay, God, okay, I got some of this, but I I I I got my I got my I got my head screwed on straight now. I got I got clarity right now. So definition number one: to show oneself useful this is what god calls being kind this is what agape love will cause you to manifest and many of you are saying well i do show myself useful all right we're gonna get a little bit clearer and you're gonna have to explain this to people you have to explain what 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 the god kind of kindness is definition number two to act benevolently okay okay Benevolently, and, and 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 many times, this whole benevolence thing kind of gets messed up a little bit. So we got to figure out what God thinks about benevolence and what God says benevolence is, and then we got to go back to Jesus Christ because Jesus walked out the kindness of God. Jesus manifested the kindness of God, and God is looking at us and saying, "If you want to be an absolute, one hundred percent victorious all the time." overcomer now you may face some misfortune you may face some troubles but you will run them things off with agape love mastering agape is literally looking at jesus and then mastering life and mastering circumstances and situations and responding with this agape so this benevolence okay definition number three to show oneself mild okay all right Look at this here. Useful. First definition, to show oneself useful. Useful means, watch this here, able to be used for a practical purpose or in several ways. This is what kindness is. So God says, my version, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they say, my version of kindness charity suffers long and is kind. Or in other words, charity is 
useful. Charity is positioned and has taken on an attitude that I'm going to be used for a practical purpose. And that practical purpose is showing God to people, showing the ways of God to people, showing people how they can now be better able to be used for a practical purpose or in several ways. Or in other words, when you begin to manifest the kindness of God, you now bring practicality to every situation, practicality to your growth and development, practicality to your dealing and your exchange with people, practicality when you're handling fortunes and misfortunes and, and bravery when you're dealing with trouble and dealing in trouble practicality to turn the trouble around by putting that trouble on notice that the agape love of God is in you and flowing through you. And then watch this here now. I love this here. And to be practically used by God in, in manifesting the purpose of agape, manifesting the purpose and showing how to walk in strength and victory. Watch this here. Now you turn around and you're able to do that in several different ways. In other words, they nothing in life can box you in nothing in life can put you in bondage nothing in life can now determine your purpose and your usefulness in god only god and you your willingness your obedience my willingness my obedience determines my usefulness in the hands of god your willingness your obedience determines your practical usefulness to God, being a blessing to yourself, being a blessing to your family, being a blessing to your friends and your even your enemies. And this is all done by choice, choice to trust in agape love, choice to be brave enough to stay in there and let God work things out for your good. Oh, sweet Jesus, this is so good. Now, number two, to act benevolently. I'm going to deal with this benevolently, and then we're going to wrap it up, get you out of here early today. Look at this here. To act in a helpful or generous way. So that means now, watch this here. God says, when you're dealing with people, oh, God, it's easy to be benevolent and kind to people that are kind and benevolent to you. But when you're dealing with people that haven't had explained to them what the kindness of God is all about, what the benevolence of God is all about. And now here you come, you're bringing benevolence and kindness into their lives. You're going to have to explain to them that they are being impacted by the agape love of God through you. And that God gave it to you. And that since you've been bravely operating in it, God has blessed you and blessed you and blessed you and blessed you. And you got to say to these people, this is what you need. You need Jesus. You need agape love. You need the Father God. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need God's plan operating in your life. And your life will change for the better. And when Satan comes to try to distract you, discourage you, and beat you down, and punk you back into his dominion, his kingdom, you'll have the agape love of God that never fails. And you will overcome Satan. You will take his, mis his misfortunes and kick them in the seat pants. You will take the troubles of Satan and kick them troubles right in the seat pants, right between the pockets. Now, I'm still being mild now. This is mild. I had to check myself today. I was like, well, I was like, Eddie Haynes, you you, you don't come off too mild. You kind of come off a little aggressive and violent and, 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 and not against people, but against that devil. But you got to explain some things to folks. All right, look at this here. Look at this here. Benevolence. It can also mean, watch this here, in a way that shows goodwills or goodwill and involves doing good for others. And this is benevolence. And, and we got to do all of it. But I like this first one, act in a helpful and a generous way. So we're literally always out there doing our best to help people, doing our best to show forth, you know what I mean, a generous portion of helping people. And sometimes that... They need more of the word of God and instruction in God than they need anything else. All right, look at this here. Watch this here. Definition number three uh, of being kind 
to show oneself mild. Okay, I, 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 I'm gonna tell you right now, th this word mild, I was like, okay, Lord, okay, uh, okay. I, this is where I started looking at myself because the word mild means not violent, not severe, not extreme, but gentle. And I was like, well, God, I, I got some of that growing in me. I mean, I, I got some of it. It's on the table. But then I then I was having conflicts because, you, you know what I mean, sometimes I, 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 I talk violent for God. What, I'm, what I want to do to the devil and what I'm going to do to the devil and what I'm going to do to his attacks. I don't talk violent to people, you know what I mean, what I'm going to do to somebody that crossed me or do me wrong. I may think it, but I'm not going to do it. Because... All right, if I if I just be honest, because God looking. And I don't want to have to repent for stuff like that. And plus, I've gotten a handle on some things. I, I know better. And you two, we know better, right? And then severe. I had to, I had to I had to check myself out. I had to say, okay, Ed Hands, are you severe in some things? Are you severe when you deal with people? And so I I, I got me on the microscope right now. And this agape love thing, I, oh yeah, I'm like, Lord, it, it, let me know if I'm out of order with some things. And God, I need your help. Get me balanced. I, I need to do it like Jesus. And then extreme. Well, you know what though? Extreme in the things of God. I'm not talking about fanatical, but extremely bold and extremely focused and extremely clear and extremely, you know what I mean? Disciplined. And, and 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 under self-control to where you become a doer of the word. Now, that's a good extremity. But, you know what I mean, getting fanatical in some things, no, nah, that's not good. So for us, for you, we got, we got this long-suffering thing we're working. We got the kindness thing of God that we're working. And, and we're looking at God right now, and we're saying, okay, wait a minute, Lord. And I'm about to close. Now, I see the runway. I'm going to land this thing. God is saying, you know, I, I'm kind to you. So this is how God gets me. I, I, I immediately, I said, well, you know what, God, this you do this to me and have been doing this to me since I've been on this planet. And then God turns around and says, okay, now if I do it to you, you got to do it, you got to do it to others. And it takes bravery and it takes the touch of God. And we have both. So I just say this here, moving forward, embrace agape. Because agape is, oh, sweet Jesus. It is the manifestation of God in the midst of the craziness and the wickedness and the ungodliness of Satan. And then I just want to say this here because the Holy Ghost said, remind him, you know what I mean? We're not perfect at this walking in agape. Agape is in us perfectly. But we expressing this agape, releasing this agape, that, that's the process that takes work. And I'm just saying, man, keep working it. Just keep working it. God's agape will not fail you. And then as you're teaching this to your friends, to your family, to your enemies, you know what I mean? Just say, look, you know what I mean? I, listen, the changes that you're seeing in me for the good, it, these changes you're seeing in me is because I've embraced agape love. So we're learning what agape is, what godly love is. And we're allowing God to reshape our thinking, to reshape our speech, to reshape our expectations, to reshape our behavior, and, and modifying all those things in line with agape love. And oh, glory to God. I tell you right now, I can't wait till we get through all of this here and get this all operational to where we've mastered it. And I'm going to tell you what you're going to look like. I'm going to tell you what you're going to sound, start sounding like. I'm going to tell you what you're going to start having as a result of agape love. You're going to sound like Jesus. You're going to act like Jesus. You're going to think and talk like Jesus. And you're going to get the same results that Jesus got 2,000 years ago and that Jesus is enjoying right here, right now, today. And the greatest joy that the Father God, that the Lord Jesus, that the Holy Spirit gets is when they look down from heaven at us and they see the growth. They see the progression. They see us manifesting agape. 
Well, my time is all gone. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. Be sure, be sure to, to listen to this again, take some notes on it, send it to a friend, and then glory to God, allow God to develop you and get you walking in the greatest power manifestation of Almighty God, and that is agape love. And that can be seen looking at Jesus Christ. The Lord touches your heart. You want to be a blessing to our ministry. Hit the description box. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. And then if the Lord touches you to sow a seed and be generous, go ahead and do that. It helps us get this gospel all around the world. We're active in our missions again. So God bless you. Your support helps us touch the world in Jesus' name. Till next time, God bless you. Shalom.